Ladies and gentlemen, backlash has come and gone and there is a lot to talk about. Was this the greatest pay-per-view? Was Edge and Jordan the greatest match of all time? We're about to find out what I think and hopefully if you guys can agree what you guys think right now. Let's go. What's up everybody, it's Aiden Sports Show and welcome back to another video. This is going to be a WWE Backlash 2020 reaction slash review, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to give my opinions on every single match that happened on Backlash and I'm going to give a grading based on every match and an overall grading of the entire show at the end of the video. So before we get started, please like and subscribe to the Aiden Sports Show YouTube channel. Turn notifications on, share the video, share the playlist. Uh, obviously the goal is 60 subscribers, so let's see if we can smash it out as quickly as possible so we can move on to the next goal. Obviously very goal orientated, so that's the goal that I hope I can achieve as soon as possible. But without further ado, let's jump into the backlash of 2020. Now, the first thing, obviously, the pre-show with um, Apollo Crews and Andrade C. and Almas. Uh, I didn't watch this match. Again, I don't know why the pre-show doesn't actually come before Backlash, but in most cases, it goes straight to the um, pay-per-view. Obviously, maybe because I watched it a little bit later, um, it didn't show up. But I, I know the outcome. Apollo Crews defeated uh, Andrade C. and Almas to retain the United States Championship. Obviously, I'm very happy to see Apollo Crews get some recognition so and actually win the championship that's his first ever WWE championship very good on him and i'm not going to grade this match but i'm going to grade uh, apollo cruz being the united states champion in a plus honestly i think that's spectacular this guy has been underrated for a very long time and um i think he's going to be a great united states champion hopefully he gets off the pre-show because uh, i want to see him wrestle on the main card man that's what every WWE superstar should be aiming for at the end of the day and hopefully he can get there but going on to the matches that i I did see uh, Bailey and Sasha Banks versus the Iconics versus Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. This was a great match to start. I'm very excited. I'm very happy that this match was as good as I thought it would be. Now, obviously, with a, a six women tag team match, there's a lot going on. It's fast paced. It's it's quick. It, it, it's energetic. There's going to be a bunch of brawls, jumping um, out of the ring onto the floor. All of this was. Um, did all of this happen? And I thought this match was incredible. Uh, I, I wouldn't go as far as saying it was the match of the night. Obviously, there's another match that we need to talk about that will get match of the night. But this match was very good, and in my opinion, probably the second best match on the show. And that's a great way to start it off, isn't it? And um, I thought Alexa Bliss was a standout here. Uh, I think she looks uh, better. She's looking better and better. I, I don't know why she doesn't get into many singles matches these days. But I'm not going to go into that because, again, I don't know. So, but it was a good match. Overall, I'm going to give this match a B. I thought this match was fantastic. And I really think it was a great way to start the show. It got me excited for the rest of the show. And that's what Backlash is. We don't... We, we want to be we want backlash as well as every pay-per-view out there to be the greatest it could possibly be and honestly i think that this match it, sh it, it gets it gets the job done especially for an opener so well done to all the ladies in this match the winner of course because i didn't say it yet is bailey and sasha banks they retained off of a roll-up from alexa bliss and of course the friendship continues this they're, they're getting to it man they're getting to it i just hope they can make it the turn where they each side the turn needs to be impactful and i hope that they can get it right man because that's going to be a great match and i don't know when it's going to happen but i'm looking forward to it two of the best women's wrestlers best wrestlers in the wwe so there we go next match a match that i wasn't really looking forward to and i'll give you my reason why sheamus versus jeff hardy now before i get into the actual match uh i want to get into the story of this because Obviously, Jeff Hardy had to prove this story. Otherwise, this wouldn't be a thing. This whole looking at his past. They've tried to do it with Samoa Joe. They've tried to do it with CM Punk. And now they're doing it with Sheamus. This story has become repetitive. And the car crash is just another way to say that Jeff Hardy's a failure in life. Honestly, if this, this is very disrespectful for a superstar like Jeff Hardy. Now, I'm not going to go and bash WWE for doing this. Because at the end of the day, there is no way this wouldn't happen if Jeff Hardy didn't approve it. So clearly, Jeff Hardy is saying, okay, I can deal with this it's fine but honestly WWE need to stop looking 
into people's demons and people's past to make a story. And it's happened so many times. It's happened with Eddie Guerrero's death. It's happened with a lot of things. And it's just unacceptable, to be honest. And I, I don't really like it. I, I feel it doesn't sit right with me to know that they're using a, an event that happened in 2018 to, in a storyline. And I, I just, I feel like it's a bit stupid, but again, it, it, it takes an approval to probably get this story out there. And yeah, I, I, I know a lot of people that don't like this storyline and I'm probably one of those people as well. I don't really like this storyline. I feel like it, it started off wrong, but I know where it's going to go towards. So we'll see. But getting into the actual match itself, obviously um, the winner was Sheamus. Uh, it was it was a good match. It was a good match. I don't think it was as good as the opener But it was definitely a good match for the most part this, was, this felt like a Smackdown type of match But they brought it really nicely towards the end um, There were good bro kicks in there swan song bomb obviously Jeff Hardy He's the master of selling isn't he it almost makes you look like he's lifeless half the time He's incredible at that It's one of my favorite things about him where you think you're not gonna he's not gonna win and he finds a way Obviously he lost in this match and I thought the match was decent. I'm giving it a B minus. That's the match ranking I'm going to give Jeff Hardy versus uh, Sheamus uh, in this in this uh, backlash pay per view. Hopefully that's okay with everybody. Uh, I know a lot of people will probably say it's better than the first match, but I don't know. I really like the first match. I, I don't know what to tell you. It's my opinion. If you disagree, let me know in the comments below, and we can discuss, man. It's at the end of the day, WWE Universe. We all have our different opinions. Just expressing mine. Going into the next match. Asuka versus Nia Jax. Now, I did not, for the life of me, really enjoy this match at all. I thought this match was, it was okay. And I, I feel like Asuka and Nia Jax have probably put on a better match than what they did, but I, I understand the circumstances of uh, performing with no crowd and everything, and maybe that kind of hindered it a bit. By the way, can I just say, having wrestling superstars as the crowd, you may as well put fake crowd noises in there because they did not do anything, man. Like, uh, this has been going on for a while, so it's not like uh, everybody's new to it or something. But come on. They seem very... They lacked energy. And the best part of the crowd was the fake crowd noises at the end of the show. So, yeah, I don't know. I feel like that's a bit dumb, to be honest. But... Whatever. Anyway, uh, the winner was Asuka. I actually missed the ending of this match, and I'm not going to go back to rewatch it. I'm assuming Asuka won by submission, taking a guess out of the wind here. I'm giving this match a C plus. Uh, I think it was a little bit better than the standard Raw match, but I don't know. I feel like this this match was probably the worst of the night, to be honest. No disrespect to the two individuals involved. I know Nia Jax has gotten through a lot of criticism as of late for the way that she's been injuring superstars and. Maybe that's a video to make in itself. Maybe not. I don't know. But I think everybody needs to understand that WWE is a very dangerous sport. And sometimes superstars are considered safe and not safe. And Nia Jax is just considered a superstar that's not really safe. I don't know. We'll see. At the end of the day, super, uh, wrestling is a dangerous sport. And sometimes you get hurt. And maybe it's just unlucky that Nia Jax seems to be... Um, seems to be the person behind everybody's injuries and maybe it's not actually her it's just the incident itself and it's just bad luck i don't know uh, again i don't want to comment on something that i don't know about maybe if other superstars can bring things to light i can make something about it and give my own opinion but for now we're going to leave it at that um c plus we'll leave it it was probably the worst match of the night for me no disrespect to any of them and we'll move on next up Braun Strowman versus The Miz and John Morrison. Hey, hey, ho, ho. What a match this was. Okay. Let's get into the introduction first. Um, that song, honestly, I think that was the best part of the match. I dead set, I think that was the be best part of the match. I love the song. I didn't, I don't know if it was edited, but those two are actually decent singers, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it was actually them. I, I, look, I don't know anything, you know? WWE could be pulling the wool over our eyes on this one, but I thought they were decent. If they actually do this every pay-per-view, they just make a song about the other person. Oh, I mean, I'd love that. I would genuinely love that. I really enjoyed the intro, and obviously Braun Strowman came out, big man in himself. Now, again, for, similar to the Jeff Hardy and Sheamus match, I didn't like this when it was introdu introduced. Because I feel like the Miz and Morrison, I think we all knew they were going to lose. Not really sure how they were going to lose, but obviously that was answered. But I feel like Braun Strowman doesn't need to 
destroy two people to make him look strong. He's already strong enough. And you're just putting two very talented superstars that could potentially be a world champion once again in the firing line and making them lose to one guy. I feel like John Morrison, who's returned recently, you're making him look weak already. And he shouldn't be weak. He should be as strong as you could possibly make him out to be. He's talented enough to be the face of the WWE. That's what I believe. So you have to give him that respect and you, you need to build him up, not throw him into a two-on-one handicap match and make him take the, um, the, the loss. I don't know. That just seems a little bit dumb to me. But it's WWE, man. They're always going to make people look weak that you don't want them to look weak and people that look strong that you don't want them to look strong. And... Enough about that. Obviously, the winner was Braun Strowman, as you could tell from this entire point. Um, John Morrison actually got the pin, but The Miz broke it up out of instinct because he wanted to be the champion. And that gave Braun Strowman the opportunity to um, destroy both of them, power slam The Miz, one, two, three, it's over. Um, I'm not sure if it was The Miz, actually. But yeah, either way, they lost. End of story. And... It, it, it's a good way to end it, I guess. It, it makes them look... Kind of strong because they could have beaten Braun Strowman. Uh, I don't know. I feel like I'm just picking at straws a little bit. You just don't know what you're expecting. Anyway, next match. And I really like this match as well. Wow, this match was amazing. Okay. Drew McIntyre versus Bobby Lashley. Now, I am one that loves Bobby Lashley. I've said it in multiple pay-per-views uh, reviews that I wish Bobby Lashley would be a champion someday because the guy has the talent and he deserves it. He does not deserve to be treated as a mid-carder or potentially a low-card um, type of individual wins or loses a match and then he's gone for a few months. I don't think that that should be what Bobby Lashley is. And honestly, with this match, I thought this match was very good. Um, was it good as Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre? No, but... They were, it's very unique. It's, it was very different. It wasn't the same type of match. And the storyline behind Bobby Lashley and Lana seems to be going into a different direction. And that could potentially lead to a breakup. And hopefully, Bobby Lashley can become a champion. Now, uh, if I had to grade this match, obviously with Drew McIntyre winning, I'd give this match uh, a B plus. I thought this match was very good. It was a little bit... You know how matches are with no crowd. Sometimes you need the crowd to build up the match. And you don't, just don't get that sometimes. I mean, the, obviously you had the superstars there just, you know, with lack of energy, just chanting. And honestly, uh, I, I felt that kind of hindered the match, if anything. But uh, nevertheless, uh, a Claymore kick. Obviously, Bobby Lashley had control. He's actually attacked with Drew McIntyre before the match. He had control. But obviously, Bobby Lashley was shoved into Lana, who interfered when she wasn't supposed to, taking out MVP. Claymore kick, one, two, three. Drew McIntyre wins. Speaks to the camera saying, Ah, oh, Bobby Lashley, he sh I told him to bring his best. And he said he brought all of his baggage. You know, the great uh, Drew McIntyre is a comedian these days. So, yeah, it was hilarious. And honestly... Um, yeah, it was a great match and I, I I enjoyed it. I enjoyed this match and it just shows the backlash It's been a good match. It's been a good time so far. So congratulations to the people involved now this one I don't know how to assess this. Uh, the Strip Profits and the Viking Raiders for the Raw Tag Team Championships Now this match never actually got started. Uh, it started off in a In the parking lot, I guess uh, just backstage or just attacking each other for no reason um, it, they turned from com something serious to comedy, then serious to comedy. Uh, for me, this was a little bit too much. I know I wanted WWE to actually um, do more of these, but sometimes it's a little bit out of text, and sometimes it's just a little bit too much. I feel like this was a little bit too much. There was so much going on here. So obviously, um, the, the golf clubs and the shields, that's fair enough. Obviously, they've had this whole uh, who could do it better situation, which is which is fine. That makes sense. Uh, obviously, they went from comedy to putting someone through a window, and they get up like it's nothing. Uh, obviously, we're back to serious. Then they started fighting outside, and then a bunch of ninjas with Akira Tozawa leading them. Like, what? What? Why? Why? Why is this a thing? And obviously, they took care of the ninjas. Then this one gigantic ninja um, comes in with his sword. They retreat. They fight on the roof. Um, everybody gets thrown into, into the garbage. Uh, basically, what this match was. And they had a dinosaur. They had the referee... Calling, uh, calling one of them cute. Uh, yeah, I get that. It's been part of the storyline for a while, so there's no, there's nothing 
wrong with that. But then a dinosaur, uh, some sort of monster thing, and come on, like, oh my goodness. I'm going to give this a C+. Uh, I feel like it was just, Look, I love these type of things, and honestly, I felt happy when I watched it, but... A overdid it this time, man. A fake dinosaur, you could all tell it was like a plastic little tail and um, at ninjas. Oh my goodness. I don't know. Maybe uh, I'll put it to a B minus. There, I'll, I'll give it to you guys. It's B minus. It's, it's, it was better than Nia Jackson Oscar. And I, I, I apologize for that. It shouldn't be a C plus. But it, it wasn't. It wasn't. Like, come on. Like, it wasn't. And um, the final match. The final match, and there's a lot to talk about in this match. Edge versus Randy Orton, the greatest match ever. Let's get into it, man. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about, I really respect WWE for making the Howard Finkel um, introductions. I think that was splendid work from them. Very nice way to pay your respects. Obviously, he's done both of their intros before, so it was able to work. And incredible and it was one of the greatest ways to give respect and to memorize and to idolize such a great commentator that's probably the best ring announcer you could possibly ever ask for and in WWE history so fair play on that that is an amazing way to start off the match and it got me excited this match went everywhere there's a story to be on this match that there were so many stories that was told in this match from the beginning where Edge was just one step behind. He always fell short. Randy Orton had him at every turn, but then Edge capitalized with one move and he showed that he could still compete with Randy Orton to the point where it started to go to his neck now. Randy Orton was attacking his neck with the backbreaker, Edge selling that neck injury so badly. Um, the, again, Edge, when he, his eyes tell the story, you go look in this match, every time you see his neck hurt, or his back hurt, or he's just completely dazed, it's always in the eyes. I feel like it was good stuff. Randy Orton, this is one of the best matches from Randy Orton I've seen in recent history. And I know I could say the same thing for Edge, but Edge hasn't had many matches, if any, only two matches, so three matches, so it's not... Uh, it, obviously, it's the best for Edge, but Randy Orton really took it to another level here. And this just shows when Randy Orton's interested in in the art that he's trying to create, my goodness, he can take it overboard. He could be one of the best. I, I love Randy Orton. I've always loved Randy Orton. And I love Edge as well. These two in a ring together, it's pure magic. Um, and yeah, I'll take you to the end because I can't explain this better enough for you guys so you can miss this match i want you with all your heart go watch this match you will see these two together are amazing there were so many things they stole finishes they stole they stole each other's finishes the christian's finisher Kurt Angle's finisher a bunch of finishes were stolen so yeah and it was a fantastic match and um uh, if you don't want spoilers on the winner of the of this match um click away now but seriously uh, to, to the way that this match ended, Randy Orton finally delivered a punt, which is something that we haven't seen in a while. He delivered the punt to Edge off, after a low blow. One, two, three. Randy Orton wins. Randy Orton spoke a lot of shit in this match and a lot of things that I can't say. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, go watch it yourself. It was, it was good. It was genuinely amazing to see. And um, I'm grading this match as an A. Now, is this the best match in the world? No, it's not. It wasn't. It didn't live up to the hype that was set for it. But by God, this match should give its credit, and it was a great match. It's probably one of the best matches in 2020 so far, and I will I will fight that with anybody. This isn't the greatest match of all time. This isn't the greatest match ever. But this was a fantastic match. And Edge said in a podcast or an interview with WWE that he picked Randy Orton as his first opponent to see if he can compete with the younger lads, to see if he could compete on a schedule or a basis where he could he could let, live up to versing the likes of an AJ Styles or to a, to a, a, a Ricochet or to, you know, Seth Rollins and etc. And that's fine. And he proved to himself and he proved to the world that not only can he live up, but he can overachieve. He can be, he can have a five-star match. He can have a perfect match. And today was just another way that he proved it. Now, I'm not sure how edited this match was, but if it was edited, WWE did very well on that. It didn't look like it at all, except for one part 
at the very start, which doesn't mean anything to me. So that's Backlash. That is Backlash. What did I think of uh, Backlash? Overall, I'm giving the uh, pay-per-view a B. That's my overall stance on Backlash. I don't want to give it a B plus because it wasn't better than Money in the Bank. Um, I don't want to give it a B minus. I might. I actually do want to give it a B minus, but I feel like the last match really took it over the top. So B is what I'm going to give um, uh, Backlash, and hopefully everybody's okay with that. It's a different sort of pay per view to Money in the Bank. Obviously, Money in the Bank is more exciting because it's, it's stipulation matches, it's it's ladder matches all the way around, and that's fine. And honestly, for for that purpose, it served good. But Backlash was a proper pay per view with. Matches one on one, uh, tag teams. There's no real gimmicky matches, of course, besides the Street Profits. And at the end of the day, um, I think it served its purpose. It wasn't the greatest pay per view out there. It probably won't be the greatest pay per view come the end of the year, but it did what it was needed to do, and it set up very nicely for Extreme Rules. So if you guys, thank you for watching. If you guys are excited for Extreme Rules, stick around for another month. Maybe you will get a reaction for or a review for Extreme Rules. Anyway. Um, for those who don't know, The Last Ride Chapter 4, Chapter 4, has come out, and unfortunately, due to me already double uploading today, I will not be uploading my review or reaction until tomorrow. So if you guys want a review or reaction out of me for The Undertaker Last Ride, um, I suggest you guys stick around tomorrow as well. A lot of the content coming around. When pay-per-views are here, there's a lot to talk about. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Uh, have a wonderful and safe day. Take care and peace.